we, we, we never know, we'll, we'll see. So um, if you have any questions, any, anything you'd like to revisit um, from the lectures that I've given or the tutorials, um, have a think and we can revisit something at the end of the lecture today. Um, systems of, of ODEs, so uh, a system's continuous but, but non-differentiable uh, on the switching manifold. And, and so, so last time we introduced the, the, the normal form for boundary equilibrium bifurcations in, in continuous systems. And, and so here's how we like to write the, the normal form just in, in two dimensions. So in, in two dimensions we, we give, give names for the coefficients in the companion matrices. That just, that those are the, the trace and determinants of the matrices. Um, um, uh, so first of all, I just want to address um, wh wh why we use the, the particular constant vector that we do. Um, okay, so, so here, here I've written the two-dimensional normal form. So we're, we're using this constant vector. Uh, so, so why do we do that? Um, so, so let's think about um, using a different vector. We'll just, just do an arbitrary vector B. Um, So, so let's let's replace this vector with some vector b times times mu, um, and, and we'll think about what what properties b needs to have, and, and from that we can see why why this is a sensible vector to use. Um, okay, so the, the key thing is that the, the transversality condition has to be satisfied. Um, so, so that's the the row transpose b has to be non-zero. Um, um, so, so that ensures that as you vary the value of mu, that the equilibrium sort of actually moves away from the switching manifold. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't be a valid boundary equilibrium bifurcation. Um, so, so for the two-dimensional normal form, so the, the adjugate of, of AL is this, and then row transpose is the first row of the adjugate, 0, 1. Um, Row transpose B. That's it. It's a zero minus one as B. Okay, so, so for the transversality condition to be satisfied, we, we simply need B2 to be non zero. Um, And so that's what we've done. We've chosen B2 to be 1. That seems like the simplest thing to do. And then the next simplest thing is to also put in uh, B1 equals 0. Um, so, so that's why we use this particular vector. Um, so we, we use a different vector for the, for the border collision normal form. So, um, so, so let me discuss this just quickly. So, so this is for maps. So um, possibly... Possibly Sumitru uh, showed you this in his lectures, um, or possibly Paul will in later lectures. So uh, for maps, maps are continuous on the switching manifold. Instead of an equilibrium, you have a, a fixed point of your map collides with the switching manifold. Um, he, here the transversality conditions is slightly different. Um, so matrix AL. Uh, is a vector b times mu. Uh, so, so to find a fixed point, you're solving a, a slightly different equation. You've got like x, y equals what? Well, can I call it a vector x? Uh, vector x is al vector x mu. Um, so, so here's the equation for finding the fixed point. Um, um, so it, instead of the adjugate of, a, of AL, you, you want the adjugate of I minus AL. Um, uh, so if you look at the, the first component, X is new one. Uh, 
So the, the, the point is that it's all the same, but we have a different definition of, of, of the specter row. It's, it's this vector, and, and for the two-dimensional normal form, um, you, you can do the calculation, it comes out to, um, it comes out to the row vector 1, 1. Um, right, so, so but we need to choose the vector b in our normal form so that um, row transpose b is not zero for this vector row. So b is, um, b is the dot product, so we get b1 plus b2. So, so we need b1 plus b2 to be not zero. Um, so, I mean, the, there are lots of simple vectors that satisfy that. So certainly this one works. So you've got B1 is 1 and B2 is 0. Um, that, that's possibly the simplest choice. And in fact, this, this choice of vector was, was used by, by Newton and York in their 1992 paper where, where this, uh, this equation first appears. Um, you could also use this vector. Right? You could have B1 is 0. B2 is 1, I'm attempting to look, um, but, but I, yeah, so you could use that vector instead, um, but it just seems like the standard thing to do is to, is to choose this vector. Uh, but certainly by putting the mu up here, it means that the image of the switching manifold is, uh, is independent of mu, which is nice, um, so, so that's, that's one reason for using this vector here rather than that one. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's enough about, about that. Um, I, I want to give some description of to what the, the dynamics of the boundary equilibrium by application normal form um, can do. Um, and and there, there are lots of possibilities. You've got, you've, got, you've got four parameters in addition to mu to, to play with. Um, so we'll just look at uh, one scenario today. Um, but we'll look at the case that uh, matrix AL is an unstable focus and matrix AR corresponds to a stable focus. So uh, AL, AR, Okay, so we're going to start out by just looking at the dynamics when mu equals zero. Um, so if it, we start out with mu equals zero, so, so we are at the bifurcation. So we have an equilibrium on the switching manifold. Uh, in fact, the equilibrium is at the origin, of course. Um, and, and, and what the orbits do, do um, uh, well, well, in the left, they, they spiral outwards, and in the right, they spiral inwards. Um, and they spiral clock, uh, clockwise because we've got a plus one here. Yeah. Um, so, so here's a typical orbit in the left. It's it's spiraling uh, outwards uh, until it reaches the switching manifold, and then it's in the right, and it starts to spiral inwards. Um, uh, generically, there are two cases. 
Uh, either it goes spirals into the origin or away from the origin. So we'll get the, um, yeah, sorry. so you, you've got these com competing actions of uh, spiraling outwards on the left and spiraling inwards on the right. And so in this picture, the, the net the net effect is it, it, go, it goes inwards. Um, Alternatively, it could spiral outwards. Uh, okay, so in, in the left picture, the, the equilibrium at the origin is it's a stable equilibrium. Um, stable. In the picture on the right, the equilibrium is unstable. Okay, okay and, and now let's think what happens for mu not zero. Um, Okay, so if you, you, you do the calculation, you find that for mu negative, um, the equilibrium in the, in the left is admissible. Um, so we have a regular. So, so we have a, a regular equilibrium in, in the left, and it's, a, it's an unstable focus. So, so orbits are spiraling outwards. Uh, however, um, sort of in the bigger picture, that things are stable. So. Um, so all orbits are spiraling inwards. So if we start sufficiently far away, we'll spiral inwards. Um, so somewhere in the middle, there must be a, a stable limit cycle. I haven't drawn my orbits very carefully. They, sh they shouldn't have a, it's a continuous system, so the orbits should be differentiable as they pass through the switching manifold. Okay, so, so hopefully you can, you can see that. So uh, overall, we've got this kind of global, the global motion is, is spiraling inwards. And then, then if we just perturb the value of mu by a little bit, move the equilibrium just to the left, but now it's unstable, spiraling outwards. Um, so there has to be a stable limit cycle in between. Um, actually, you can scale the value of mu, that the, the magnitude of mu doesn't matter, just because it's, a, because it's a, just from that the piecewise linear nature of the system. But so for all negative values of mu, you have a stable limit cycle, but the size of the limit cycle is proportional to the uh, absolute value of mu. Okay, and then for mu positive, um, uh, equilibrium in the right is admissible. It's a stable focus. Um, so, it, so everything just converges to that focus, I guess. So. Okay, so what I've drawn here looks very much like a Hopf bifurcation, right? You've got, you've got an equilibrium, it changes from a, perhaps we'll go from the right to the left, we'll, we'll kind of go backwards. You've got a, a stable focus, changes to an unstable focus, and you, and you get a limit cycle being created. Um, it, it's like a Hopf bifurcation. Uh, I'll call it a Hopf-like bifurcation. It has some important differences. Um, uh, two, just a classical hop bifurcation. Uh, first of all, uh, for, a, for a classical hop bifurcation, at the, at the bifurcation you have 
eigenvalues that are purely imaginary. But here, as we go from the right to the left, the eigenvalues kind of uh, jump across the imaginary axis. Um, um, and the other difference is for a hop application, um, amplitude of the limit cycle is proportional to the square root of the parameter change, whereas here it's, it's, uh, it grows linearly with respect to the parameter. Um, and then if we did the same thing when the origin is unstable, uh, but we have the same pictures but just but with time reversed essentially. Um, yeah. Spiraling outwards, but it's moving to there. Uh, so in this case, we get an unstable limit cycle um, surrounding the, the stable focus. Okay, so again, this is it's 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 a hop flight bifurcation, um, but by now we've got an unstable limit cycle instead of a limit cycle. Um, uh, so so the, when the limit cycle is stable, we say that the Hopf-like bifurcation is, is supercritical. Uh, and this case is called a, a subcritical Hopf-like bifurcation. Uh, you, you want to distinguish between these two cases? Um, that, that's exactly what I want to do next. Yeah. Yeah, so as Dimitri suggested, it would be nice to have a condition that tells us wh which case we're in, because that's going to determine the criticality of the Hopf-like bifurcation. Um, uh, so, so for smooth systems, for, for a classical Hopf bifurcation, the criticality is determined by, by quadratic and, and cubic terms in your system, uh, whereas, whereas here it's just determined by, by linear terms, just by the values of these parameters. Um, okay, so what I want to do next is a calculation to determine the stability of the origin. <laughs> Okay, so mu equals zero, so we have equilibrium on the switch manifold at the origin. Um, but what we're going to do is, is construct a Poincare map. Um, so I'll, I'll choose some value y naught on the positive y-axis um, and to evolve around and I want to determine that the next point that the orbit hits the Positive y axis. Um, be P. So this, this next point will be P of y naught, where, where P is the Poincare map. Um, okay. Um, right, so my, my Poincare map is going to have two pieces. I have, I have one piece for the flow on the right and one piece for the flow on the left. So just for in the right. Um, Go from y naught around to p subscript r, um, and then I'll have a, a p l for going on the left. Um, uh, okay, so so we choose an arbitrary value of y naught, but we want to calculate 
this next point. So, so to, to do that, we have to, to calculate the, the orbit. Um, but, but we know how to do that because the system on the left is just a linear system. I told you all about linear systems in the first lecture where we, we know how to find solutions. We can, we can do our, do our e, e to the power of a matrix or we can compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, it's a bit too messy for our companion matrix. Uh, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit. But we're going to do the I'm going to do it for a different matrix, but for the real Jordan form. Uh, consider. Instead. Uh, right, so I'm going to re replace the matrix AR with this matrix. Um, so that the eigenvalues of AR um, uh, at lambda R plus or minus I omega uh, uh, certainly, sorry, oh, that's really written there. Lambda R. Yeah, negative. Okay, so we'll, we'll assume that the eigenvalues of AR are, are, are this, where, where the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive. Um, and so here's the, the real Jordan form. Um, and and for, for this system, it's, it's much easier to calculate the, um, the Pankari map because uh, I can just change to, to polar coordinates. So if, if I change this to polar coordinates, um, R dot is, is minus. Um, right, so in, in polar coordinates, um, that the angle is, that theta dot is a constant. Um, that the angle just increases, oh, angle decreases because I'm going clockwise. Um, angle decreases at a constant rate. And and the, and the, the radial component R grows exponentially. Um, okay, so, so from this, uh, I, I'm, going, I'm going 180 degrees. So, so, so how long does it take to go 180 degrees? Uh, let's see, well, but velocity is distance divided by time. Uh, so, so time is, this is another time. Time is distance divided by velocity. The time is distance of 180 degrees divided by my velocity omega r. Uh, so okay, so, so this is the time it takes for the orbit to evolve in the right. And where does it get to um, so r? E to the R. E. No. So just got a, a one dimensional linear system. Here's the solution. Uh, my initial, initial value of R is Y naught. Um, so I've determined that the time is pi over omega. So lambda R pi. Try to write that as big as I can. So I go e to the lambda r pi divided by omega r times y naught. Um, um, okay. So, so then, then the y value is, is the negative of this. So um, negative. Um, so that's the, the y value. Okay, so I've, I've, I've successfully calculated um, this value, uh, but, but I've cheated because I've done it for this uh, matrix instead. Uh, it turns out that the result is exactly the same um, for our companion matrix AR. 
Uh, but because the, the two matrices kind of differ by a, you're just, you're just doing a FI and transformation. Um, and when you're going 180 degrees, it, it doesn't change the calculation. Um, okay. Uh, and then in, in the left, we have exactly the same thing. Um, I want to. Oh. So if I go from Y1 round to some point up here, have PL of Y1 is minus E to the, now I've got lambda L and lambda R, uh, omega R, so pi L Y1. Um, right, so the system on the left has eigenvalues Lambda L plus or minus pi omega L. Um, in the left, the focus is unstable, so lambda L, the, the real part is positive, and but for simplicity, I can assume that the, the omega L is positive as well. Um, okay, so then I just compose the two half maps to get the full Poincare map is E L is so just compose the two maps together, this one. Guy. Um, so so the, the two exponentials just multiplied together. Uh, the minuses turn into a plus. Um, so you're just adding the exponents. So you've got a, a lambda L over omega R L plus lambda R over omega R and whole thing times pi. Uh, right. Um, so, so now we ask, is, is the Poincare map taking orbits outwards or inwards? Um, um, so, so it all depends on whether this, whether this uh, factor, it depends whether this factor is, is bigger than one or less than one. Um, so if, if this exponential is as a value bigger than one, then orbits go outwards. If this value is less than one, then orbits go inwards. Um, uh, so I can look at the exponent. I want to know, is the exponent positive or negative? Um, so uh, so if, if this thing is negative, I've got e to the negative number, I've got something less than one, so orbits are stable which means my hot flight bifurcation is super critical. Uh, if, if this thing is positive, it's subcritical. So, so, so I'm hoping that by, by doing this, um, I'm showing you a few concepts that, that recur elsewhere in piecewise smooth systems. Um, so first of all, in order to understand the dynamics, we've constructed a, a Poincare map. So that, that's a very important thing to do. And for piecewise smooth systems, we often have to uh, compose like two different um, um, two different maps. Um, a, um, yeah. And then the, the criticality of the bifurcation that's determined, um, determined by the eigenvalues in this way, um, and the eigenvalues come from just the linear terms in the system, that the higher order terms um, don't, don't matter, except in special cases. Um, okay. Okay, so that's, that's enough about two-dimensional systems. Um, so we could think about higher dimensions. 
So here's the normal form in, in three dimensions. And, and now there's just so many things that could possibly happen. Uh, here's just one particularly interesting phase portrait, uh, I think. So, so this is very similar to the example I showed you, was it yesterday, with the, for a discontinuous system. So I had, we had, um, we had a, a, what seemed like a, a chaotic attractor. Uh, so we have s s something similar here. Our, our regular equilibrium is a saddle focus. So it's got a one-dimensional stable manifold and a two-dimensional unstable manifold that's, that's uh, with complex eigenvalues. So, so orbits, orbits spiral out on the unstable manifold of the equilibrium uh, nicely uh, until they reach the switching manifold. And uh, I've chosen parameters on the left so that w when orbits get into the, into the left, that they kind of go back under and around and they kind of fold down. Um, so, so you've got this uh, expansion, but then you've also got folding, uh, but very much like the, the, the Rosler attractor, expansion and folding, and, and that sort of naturally gives you chaos. Uh, I, I believe this orbit is, cha is chaotic. Um, I studied the, the two-dimensional Poincaré map that you get, and the two-dimensional map is kind of difficult to analyze, but it's, it's well approximated by a one-dimensional map, and, and I found that that one-dimensional map is, is very much like a, a quadratic map, um, like the logistic map, um, but, but sort of uh, describing this folding motion. Um, and so, so that reason that, um, yeah, it sort of behaves like the quadratic family. But, um, um, okay, so um, that, that's enough about bifurcations of equilibria. Um, so I want to discuss bifurcations of, of limit cycles. Um, Run out of space. Okay, so if we have a we have a, a limit cycle in our piecewise smooth system. Um, got a switching manifold sigma. We've got some limit cycle. Yeah. Um, let's suppose we want to understand the stability of the limit cycle. We want to understand the nearby dynamics. Um, so we would construct a Poincaré map. Um, it, it doesn't matter where we put our Poincaré section. We could put our section just about anywhere out, out here, perhaps. In practice, it's sort of convenient to put your Poincaré section um, on the switching manifold. But in, in theory, it doesn't matter. Um, so for, for this particular limit cycle, um, that the intersections with the switching manifold are, are non-tangential. It, it, just, it just has transverse intersections. Um, this. Um, and so when you write down the Poincaré map, um, you find that the map is smooth. Yeah. And we kind of had that over there. Um, our map just comes out to be a linear map. No, nothing non-smooth in there. Um, so so the, the limit cycle will be a fixed point of a, a smooth map, and that the bifurcations will just be governed by smooth systems, um, that the limit cycle, that limit cycle can lose stability by a central node bifurcation or a Curie doubling bifurcation or a niemark sacker bifurcation, so all, all the smooth theory for maps applies. Uh, right.
Right. Um, assume that for the system on the right, the system on the right has a fold exactly um, at this point of intersection. So, so that to you might seem like a very special thing to consider. But what, what are the odds that the system on the right just happens to have a, a fold conveniently there? Uh, well, it turns out that, that that arises in in mathematical models. So, for example, um, so my phase space, this axis this axis could be the um, the, the position or, or or displacement of of an oscillator. And on the vertical axis, I'll have the velocity. And so my equations in motion will be uh, rate of change of position is velocity. Um, rate of change of velocity is some, is some force, some sum of forces that's being applied sort of on the oscillator to, divided by the mass, I suppose. Um, and you'll notice we've just got u dot is v. So, so there'll be some special value of of, of you, so if, if you think about a mechanical system with, with impacts, that may be a, a pendulum, pendulum swinging back and forth. At some special place, there's a, there's a wall that it impacts. Um, so that, that'll correspond to the switching manifold. Um, your, your equations are just u dot is v. So when you calculate the folds, you get exactly the same point on the left and the right, just seeing where this equals zero. Um, and, and this sort of thing is, well, it's been observed experimentally. So there's a, there's a paper by Smitru and, and Marian, I can't pronounce his last name, he's at Aberdeen, and I, th I think the first two are his sort of former students. Um, right, so, so they, they sort of built an impact oscillator. Um, so it's a bit more sophisticated than, than a pendulum that hits a wall. Instead of a pendulum, they've got this mass in there. Um, Here's their block that's, that's vibrating. And instead of a wall, they've got uh, this thing that it hits. Uh, but, but it's not a solid wall, but the wall's allowed to move a little bit. Um, and, and so for that reason, for that reason, the value of, mu, uh, value of u is allowed to take values in the right. Um, and so, so here's the results of their, some experiments. So that They've experimentally computed the bifurcation diagram. Um, so that their parameter is the frequency of the forcing. Uh, so for a small value of the frequency, uh, but they just get a stable oscillation, just a stable limit cycle but with no impacts. And, and they ramp up the frequency a bit, the limit cycle grows until that the special point at which, um, at which this happens. Uh, and you get some uh, you get some impacts happening and some more complicated dynamics going on. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I have to find the right page. And with that one. Aha, okay. Um, okay, so what, what I want to do now is explain to you that the form of, of the Poincare map that you get. Um, so I, I want to do this for like the, the simplest system possible. Um, and and so that this requires three dimensions. A, a, a two dimensions is, is too simple. Um, My, my vector x is three dimensional. Oh. My three-dimensional vector will be or have components of scalar x, y, and z. Um, and, 
And I, I want to sort of set it up like I've got in the picture on the screen. Perhaps I can kind of draw the... Um, so the, the switching manifold is where x equals zero. Um, um, what else? Uh, I, I'm assuming that there's no sliding motion. Um, so, so for a three-dimensional system, we'll, we'll have a, a, a in general, there'll be a, a curve of folds. So I'm going to sort of choose coordinates so that I've got a nice line of folds. Um, so it's my, my line of folds will just be the z-axis. And it's going to be the same for the, for the left system and the right system. Um, but for the system on the left, it's going to be uh, visible folds. For the system on the right, it's going to be invisible folds. Um, and then I need a Poincare section. So the Poincare section, I want it to be transverse. So I'm going to, Poincare section is going to be where y equals zero. So that the Poincare section, call it capital pi. This is where y equals zero. Uh, switching manifold, capital sigma, that's where x is zero. Okay, so I just want to start writing down the equations and, and get most of the way with the Poincaré map, and then I'll, I'll have, we'll have a short break. You can do a calculation if you like. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just expand the vector fields FL and FR just in a neighborhood of, of the origin. So, so we're assuming that the system on the left has a limit cycle, limit cycle um, collides with the origin um, when, when mu equals zero. Um, so we just want to expand about the origin and mu equals zero. So A L B L B Y. Yeah, so I'll, I'll skip the details which are in the, the notes I provided. Um, okay. they are. So, so, so the, these are the terms that, uh, that are going to be important. Uh, all the other terms are higher order. Uh, yeah, so, so I've got eight parameters, AL all the way down to DR. So, so these are real numbers. Um, I, I want BL to be positive, so that on the left, um, I'm, I'm arriving at the at y positive on the switching manifold. And I want br positive so that there's no sliding going away from the switching manifold there. Thus, I put a minus sign there, so I want cl to be positive and cr to be positive so that I'm going at y values decreasing so that I'm crossing the Poincare section on the right to left, but as on the screen. Yes, we're with all that. Um, now we're ready to construct our, our map. Okay, so, so let's, let's think about what an, a typical orb, orbit does. Um, so, right, 
Okay, so, so here's our orbit. We follow it. It's, it's in the left until it hits the switching manifold, and then it starts to follow the system on the right. Hits the switch manifold again, goes, goes off, does its big excursion in the left. Hits the switch manifold again, does, follows the system on the right, goes off to the left again. Okay, so in doing so, it has, it has two intersections with the Poincaré section. It intersects at point X2 and X7. Um, but, so the, the naive way of defining the Poincaré map is to say so that X2 goes to X7. Naive. Naively. How do you spell naively? Naively. Uh, X7 is of X2. So you, you can define your Poincaré map in this way. Um, it turns out to not be a very good idea. Uh, why is that? Well, it's, it's not a good idea because you've got these, well, got these little pieces. Um, right, and, and the, the, this piece has a nearly tangential intersection up here. Just, just, okay, I can't quite see it right now, but it comes out into a big mess. So, so there's a better idea. Um, so first of all, but we're going to solve the system on the left, but, but in the right. So, so our, our orbit, as it comes along here, re reaches the switch manifold for the first time and starts to follow the system on the right. But, but let's instead just use the equations of motion in the left to continue uh, solving it into the right. So, so even though the equations are not valid here, we can still compute something and, and get, get an intersection with, with the Poincaré section, x naught. Um, I could do that backwards from X3 here, and then around up here as well to get X5. Um, so, so let's think about the, the Poincaré map from, from yes. So, so what, what we're going to do instead is go from X0 to X5. Um, and we're going we're to do it in two steps. Uh, first, we'll, we'll, go, we'll consider X4 to X5. Uh, X4 to X5 is, is very nice. So, right. uh, X5. Um, so, so, we have some map that takes us from the point X4 to X5. Um, and I'll call this the global map uh, because this uh, captures the dynamics of, of the excursion far away. And, and, and the point. The point is that this map uh, is just governed by the, the left system. So it's just following the system on the left. Um, it's got nice transversal intersections with one Poincaré section. Um, so, so this is just a smooth map. P um, global z mu is Yeah, um, I, I can write the map like this. So the, the Poincaré section is y equals zero. So I've got some point with y equals zero maps to another point. It's just a smooth map, so to leading order, it's just linear. Um, I'm, but when mu equals zero, I'm assuming there's a limit cycle passing through the origin, so there's no constant term. Um, and okay, so then we need it. We need another piece. We need the map from from x naught to around to x four. Um, but this is what's called the discontinuity map. And then our 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 Poincaré map will be the composition of these two. The P is P global. Okay, so, so we're defining our, our Poincaré map in a, in a, a kind of different way to, than, than what you'd usually do. And the, the downside is that the, the domain of the map includes some sort of virtual points. 
the, the domain of our map includes points x naught, which, which don't actually belong to the orbit we're studying. Uh, but that's okay. That these, uh, that you, you could instead, well, I don't want to say this. It, it sort of doesn't matter. So it describes the dynamics equivalently. It's all okay. Uh, but the nice thing about the discontinuity map is that it's a local map. So the, the idea is this is all happening in the neighborhood of the origin on the right. So x0 to x backwards to x1, through x2 to x3, and then backwards to x4. That's happening very near the origin. It's a local map. So to understand the discontinuity map, we can just do halo expansions. That's sufficient. Um, so so that, that, this whole concept, uh, it's, it's very important. It's used for studying all sorts of grazing and sliding bifurcations. Um, I believe it was first dreamt up by Arne Nordmark. Uh, he's got a 1991 paper where he um, describes it for uh, an impacting system. Uh, Nordmark. Uh, okay. it's taking longer than I thought it was. It's okay. How much more? Yeah. Right, a few more equations and then I'll take a little break. Just want to get to a good pausing point, if you like. Um, okay, so to, to derive the discontinuity map, um, we need equations for the flow, but just, just like we did over here. Uh, but we derived equations for the flow in polar coordinates. Did the same thing here, and lost it now. Aha. So x one. Oh. So the, the discontinuity map is going to involve three pieces. Uh, first of all, we go x0 to x1, then x1 to x3, and then x3 to x4. So if we just do that, the middle piece, x1 to x3, uh, that, that's following the system in the right. Um, uh, so, so we need an equation for the, for the flow in the right. Um, the Okay, so my initial point is going to be uh, that vector x1, that's, so the x value is 0, uh, y and z are arbitrary. Uh, and, you know, you, you can do your expansions, do your kind of asymptotic matching to match coefficients in the ODEs, and you can come up with this. Uh, or, or you could just check that it works, uh, plug this into the ODEs, see that it works. So, so when, when t equals 0, I get 0, y, and z. Um, and then I need to solve for when, the, when I get to x3, so, so when the value of x is 0. So I solve for where the x component is 0, and I get two solutions. I get either t equals 0, which is the point x1. I, I don't want that. Uh, so or, or I get a value of t from this equation. So t is vry divided by that. T is uh, BRs cancel 2 over CR y plus. Um, okay, so I can uh, put the time into the back into the equations here to get the values of, of y and z for, for the this point, and it gives me y3 is, uh, I see I get minus. Uh, y1, z3 is z1, plus 2, yeah, 
Why one? Mm. Okay, so, so I, I get these equations, just nice linear equations. Uh, then I can do the same thing for the, for other, for the other two pieces of the uh, discontinuity map. I'll write those similarly. Uh, that one, I need one more. Oh, okay. uh, <clears throat> All right, so that's for the three pieces. You put them all together. Um, four. And this is this is the, the form of the map that you get. Uh, so the key thing, it's got a square root in it, and kappa, kappa is something, in terms of all those. Uh, okay, so at this point, I've gone, I've gone longer than I wanted to, so we'll, we'll take a short break now, just five minutes at the most. What you might like to do if, if you want something to do, if you want something to do, you could calculate the value of kappa. So, so compose these pieces of the map together. Um, it's not hard, because I've written them all out if you can read them, um, and you can get a formula for kappa. I'll stop talking for a few minutes and then we'll continue. <clears throat> okay, well, that's perhaps enough of a, uh, a respite, uh, if you like. So, a few things I want to say. So, so here, that this is what you need to do to get from, from the point number one to the point number three. Then the same kind of thing for the from point three to point four, um, but but the time taken is only half as long. Uh, and, and then the, this this calculation it's sort of very kind of by symmetry it's the same as x one to x naught. My lost my pointer. <clears throat> right, so it's so x one to x naught is kind of by symmetry it's the same as x three to x four. Uh, but, but we want x0 to x1. We, we want to go backwards. So you have to invert this thing. And, and this thing's got a, a, a square term in it. So when you invert, you get a square root. So that's where the square root x comes from. Uh, yeah, compose them all together. Um, you, you, get, you get square roots, square root x naughts in there, but in the x equation, they all, all vanish. So the x, x value just... To, to leading order, the x value is the same. The x value is the same. It's, it's the z value that, that's different. That, that the z value has the square root x naught in it. Uh, which is why we have to consider things in three dimensions to get, the, to really understand what's going on. Uh, two dimensions, it, it's not enough. Um, okay, so, so here's our discontinuity map. Uh, that this is for x naught, uh, that in the right. So, so as, as our orbits spiral around, but we could have intersections in the left, and so in that case, you, you take the discontinuity map to be the identity map. You, you, you're just not entering the right. Um, so so the, the full map, it, it's piecewise smooth. Uh, you, you're combining the global map and the discontinuity map. In one piece, it's just the global map, and in the other piece, it's the global map composed with this thing with the square root. Um, okay. okay, so in summary, in order to understand grazing sliding bifurcations, um, such as they occur in, in this impacting systems, in order to understand these, we need to understand maps of this form. So in the simplest case, we want to understand two-dimensional maps with a, with a square root singularity, or, or, or really sort of any dimensional map. The piecewise, 
piecewise smooth map with a square root singularity. Um, for this reason, it's important to, to, to study those sorts of maps, uh, which, which hopefully the, the others have been mentioning. Um, okay, so I was planning to have about 20 minutes left. I just have a few more things to say. They won't take long. I'm on my last slide now. Um, so we're, we're going to do the same thing, just uh, in less time, but for, for a different type of bifurcation. Uh, this is a, a grazing sliding bifurcation. Um, so, so we have the same kind of setup, but, but now we, we're going to make different assumptions on, on the vector field in the right. Um, so, so now we're, we're just going to assume that the vector field in the right sort of points towards the switching manifold. That, that's it. Um, and, and so what happens is, is you get some sliding motion on, on one half of the switching manifold and the other half is a, is a crossing region. Um, um, you, you can uh, set things up in the same way. Um, so set up the a Poincare section, um, and you can uh, write down a map ca composing a global map and the discontinuity map in the same way. So uh, our discontinuity map will go from x0 to x2, and then the global map will go x2 around to x3. Um, so so we're, we're, when you drive the discontinuity map, you're going from x0 to x1 and then x1 to x2. So, so again, you get a square root term in there, at least initially. You, you get a square root term because, because this thing's kind of a, a parabola. Just, just, it's just the same calculation, actually. The x0 to x1 is exactly, exactly this. Um, uh, however, that the square root term sort of cancels out with, with what you get from the sliding motion. Um, and I can explain to you why that happens. Um, VL is R minus VR. So, so here's our formula for the sliding vector field. Um, And, and so we're, we're looking very near this, uh, the, the fold line. So, so on the vertical, on the z-axis, we've got a um, we've got visible folds for the, for the left system. But on, on the vertical, and we've got um, we've got VL equals zero, and we're looking in a neighbourhood of that. So, so as VL goes to zero, what does the sliding vector field do? Cancels out. This way, I've got a minus VR divided by VR. Um, you, you just get left with, with FL. Um, so, so to leading order, um, that the sliding vector field is the same as the vector field on the left, which is what we're doing here. And so that, that the two maps to, to leading order are the same. And, and they both have a square root term, but the square root term cancels out that the next order term is linear. Um, so when you put everything all together, the, the final map you get is, is piecewise linear to, to leaving order. Is um, uh, yeah. Um, right, so, so again, for values of x on the left, um, the discontinuity map is the identity map, and on, on the right, you, you have no square root terms, you just have linear terms, uh, but there'll be plus higher order terms, plus higher order terms, and, and, and importantly, that, that the next order terms will be order 3 over 2, because you've got sort of a square root, you've got powers of x, to the square root in a series, and so the next order term will be order three over two, um, which is which is bigger than an order two term. So the the higher order terms don't matter, but but they have a bigger influence than than you might otherwise expect. Um, 
Uh, another thing to note is this, this isn't just an arbitrary linear map. I, I've got a zero here. But the reason I've got a zero is when I do my discontinuity map, uh, the x value is zero. Uh, so simply because I'm sliding. I'm sliding on the switching manifold. So when, it, when I get to here, um, the, the value of x is, is just zero. Um, I've got a zero. Um, okay, so it's piecewise linear. So to, to understand grazing sliding bifurcations, which occur in slick slip systems and, and other systems, uh, we want to understand uh, piecewise linear continuous maps, which uh, such as the border collision normal form, which I think the others will discuss or have already discussed possibly. Um, but, but there's one extra thing. We've, we've got the zero here. Um, so, so when we have the two matrices in our border collision normal form, we have an AL and an AR, uh, one of these matrices will have a zero eigenvalue. So if, if, if this, this guy goes to AL, um, the zero is going to give you a zero eigenvalue. Um, so in, in two dimensions, that, that will be your delta R. Um, delta R is zero. In some ways, the two-dimensional map behaves a bit like a one-dimensional map. Anyway. Um, okay, uh, that's took me a bit longer than I wanted to do, but that's all I wanted to get through. Uh, so now's a good time for, uh, for any more questions. Yes, yes. Um, right, so, so a, a general principle for, for both smooth systems and piecewise smooth systems, um, when you define a Poincare map, it, it shouldn't matter where you put your section, where you put your cross section. Um, you'll, you'll get different maps for different cross sections, but the two maps should be conjugate or effectively the same, so um, as long as you don't have a tangential intersection. So um, but for convenience, it seems to be, it seems to be convenient to put your Poincare section, uh, for the system I did earlier where you put the Poincare section on the switching manifold. Right. Right. It feels like a special case. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, my claim is that you, you'll get the same form of the map. It doesn't matter where you put the Poincare section. You, you, you'll just have, there'll, there'll be more work to do if you put it somewhere else. Like if, if I put the Poincare section, if I put my Poincare section out here somewhere, then, then the global map, I'll need to break it into two pieces. I'll need to go from the section around to here and then from here back to the section. Just more work to write out, but should be equivalent in the end. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Uh, other types of bifurcations uh, of this sort of type. What would be the form of the map? You have to look in the, in the Bristol book. So you've got your adding, sliding bifurcation, switching, sliding. I, I don't remember the, it's like linear. It, it, it could be that the, um, but from memory, um, for, 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 for at least one of them, uh, that the linear pieces are actually the same and, and that they differ in the order three over two part. Um, in, in that case, I, I think no, there's no real change in, in the dynamics that the linear terms are the same, so nothing really happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you have to look it up, but somewhere out there, there's, 
there's a, there's a list of like the types of maps you get for the different types of applications. I think these two are the most important ones. We can, we can leave it there if you like. Uh, okay, we can do that. Yeah.